morning. Would, would you join me in the call to, uh, into the opening prayer on the screen or in your bulletin? Come to us, God, for we are waiting, waiting and hoping that your word of peace will soothe our fearful and doubting souls. Open our hearts to the message you would share with us today through song, prayer, and meditation, that our souls might reach out touch you and believe. Help us claim our identity as your beloved children. Help us live into this identity today and always, that we might radiate your love to others. Come, beloved one. We are here to listen and be transformed. Amen. Let's stand as we sing our hymn of praise this morning, Marching to Zion. Please join with me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, and he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall judge, judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. This morning's gospel lesson comes from Luke 24, 36 through 48. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I, myself. Touch me and see. 
A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. I invite you into a time of personal prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks to you as we gather here today in your house to praise your name and to hear your word and to experience you. We pray, O God, that we do feel your presence, that we feel your presence not just around us but within us because that is where you are. And we pray that you will open us up to your spirit within us so that we can be transformed into who you created us to be. Help us to be more loving, to be more forgiving, to be more gracious. Help us to be kinder to those who are sometimes unkind to us. Help us to be forgiving to those who do us wrong. Help us to realize that we are your children. And while that is such a wonderful thing to be, but it also comes with responsibility. Help us to act as your children, as you would have us act. Give us the strength and the courage and the boldness to be who you want us to be. Oh God, we live in a world filled with war and filled with violence, filled with evil. And in this time of bombings, we pray, oh God, for your wisdom and your discernment for the leaders of all nations. You said, O God, that blessed are the peacemakers. Help us as your people to be peacemakers in this world. Help us to love even our enemies as you commanded. Help us to pray for them as you commanded. Let your love transform this world Let it begin with those of us who claim to be your children. And let it spread through us to everyone around us until it reaches every person on this globe so that people will put away their swords and their bombs and their chemical warfare. And let us join hands together, realizing that if we work together and love each other, and if we praise you, then we will know the peace for which we claim to long to long. Give us your strength and your courage, O God, as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn of preparation this morning is Oh, How He Loves You and Me. Heavenly Father, all good gifts come from you, and from these riches we bring this offering. Help us to use it for the furtherance of your purpose in this place and for the benefit of those in need. In your name we pray. Amen.
Our New Testament lesson today comes from the book of 1 John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does, does not believe, does not know us, is that it did not follow, does, did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone does what is right. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Eric got together with a couple of his old friends yesterday and celebrating his birthday, and one of his old friends said, You know, sometimes. I'm standing in front of the refrigerator with a jar of mayonnaise in my hand and I don't know if I'm putting it back in the refrigerator or if I'm about ready to make a sandwich. <laughs> and another of his friends said, you know, sometimes I'm, I find myself halfway on, on the landing and the stairs and I don't know if I'm going up or going down. Well, Eric said, <laughs> well, I don't have that problem, knock on wood. And he knocked on it three times. And then he said, well, just a minute, I've got to go check the door. <laughs> That's an honor of you, Eric, for your birthday. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> today we're in our second of, of our series in the, go uh, the book of 1 John. 1 John is thought that was written about 10 years after the Gospel of John. Um, it's may not be written ex by the same person, but it came out of the same community, it's believed. And there's lots of parallel themes between the Gospel of John and the, the three letters of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. There's lots of similar terminology. There's talk about light, and there's, um, there's an emphasis on the love of God. And, you know, the Gospel of John is really my personal favorite of the, of the four Gospels. It's, it's uh, much different from the other three Gospels. The other three we call the Synoptic Gospels because they're very similar. Um, it looks like they got a lot of their information from the same source. And um, there's a little different emphasis in each, each of those three Gospels. But, but Jesus in the Gospel of John, there is no doubt about it that Jesus is God in the Gospel of John. He is the Word become flesh. We read that in chapter 1 of John. And 1 John, for the, for the writer of 1 John and 2 and 3 John, that's a, that is still a basic principle there. It's an important principle that Jesus is the Son of God, that He is the Word become flesh. And one of the messages we get from the Gospel of John is that, that the that the Word should also become flesh in the followers of, of Jesus. In fact, when Jesus was resurrected, when he met with his disciples, in the passage we read last week in, from the Gospel of John, Jesus breathed on his disciples, and that's basically the Pentecost story for John, except the word, the Greek word there, emphasio, means to breathe into, and it's used elsewhere and Greek translations of the Old Testament about breathing into, not breathing on. Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit into his disciples. The Holy Spirit is a, became a part of the disciples. The Word became flesh literally in them too, not to the extent that it was flesh in Jesus, of course, but, but that's the same thing that happens to us. When we have faith in Jesus, the Holy Spirit becomes a part of us. The Holy Spirit is what transforms us. Too often I think that we think that, that Jesus is just some human being. We present him 
sometimes as just a human being, and that he's a good moral teacher, and maybe it's not what we think, but a lot of people think he's a great moral teacher, but that's pretty much it. If we just follow the rules, then we're going to be okay. But I don't believe that's the extent of it. I believe that that incarnational message of the Gospel of John is, is what's really important because that's what empowers us to do what Jesus commands us to do, to love our enemies, to pray for our enemies, to be peacemakers in a world that only wants to start fights and start wars. It's the Spirit within us that empowers us to do these things. And that's why when 1 John talks to, to, when the writer of 1 John talks to this community, he says, remember that you are children of God. What an amazing thing to believe. Have you ever done any or read anything about the science of the, the universe these days, what they're discovering about the universe in which we live, how big it is. I mean, it's just, it's beyond comprehension. But we say we believe in an omnipresent God, which means that God is everywhere, which means God fills the entire vastness of this universe. And yet, He knows each of us. He claims us as his children. He knows us all by name. He loves every single one of us. He wants us to know that we are his children. You know, a lot of people believe in that, that moralistic God that only is a judge, not a loving God, that God is out to get you. I was like that for a while. When I was growing up, I grew up... Um, in Houston, for a while anyway, and, and that's what I believed about God, that God was love, that God loved me, Jesus loves me, this I know, I could sing that and believe it, but then when we moved overseas, we moved to you know, Japan, we were there for a year, and, and we were invited to watch these movies, one was, you know, back, this was back in the 70s with Hal Lindsey when he was really popular, and the late great planet Earth kind of stuff, and and there's a new world coming, and then there's a, a, a film that if you watch it today, you'll probably think, well, that's a cheesy kind of movie. But I was 11 years old, and there's a movie called A Thief in the Night talking about the second coming, and Jesus was going to come, and all these people were left behind to this movie, you know, the whole Left Behind series of books that came out, started out in the 90s, that kind of stuff. that got, It made me stop believing that God was a God of love. I thought that God was was someone who was all too ready to leave me behind if I said the wrong word one day or if I did the wrong thing one day or if, if, I, if I didn't believe exactly the way I was supposed to believe. God was not love to me. God scared me. Who wants to be a child of that kind of God? A God that we're afraid of. That's not the God of the Gospels. The God of the Gospels is a God of love. The God of the Gospels is a God of transformation. Stanley Jones, you know, I talk a little bit, a lot, of, well, a lot about Stanley Jones, the person I'm doing my thesis on. He would say that God is a Christ-like God. So if we read something about God and we don't see that... Jesus' character aligns with what we think, what we hear someone say about God. Well, that's not who God is. God is a Christ-like God, which means God is someone who hangs out with the sinners. It means God is someone who, who loves people and is not quick to condemn people. God is someone who wants everybody to be saved. God is a, an, all, an all-loving God. When we read next week's Chat, um, verses in 1 John, we'll see that God is love. That's who God is. And yet too often and too many people in our world think that God is someone to be feared. And when, but, when, but if we read the Gospels and read the words of Jesus and pay attention to his life, we know that that's not the case. That God is a God who loves us. God is a, a God who welcomes us no matter where we are, no matter what we've done. And God wants has adopted us as his children. We are claimed by God. 
what a joyful thing to say and to believe that we are children of God. If only this world knew that God loves us that much. I don't know what you believe about God and if you believe that God is out to get you like I did when I was a teenager after watching those movies back in the, in the 70s. Or if you've always just believed that God was love and that God would welcome you no matter what you did. Sometimes I wonder if, if we really believe that God is as God is, that if we believe God is what we claim He is, that He's love, because I don't know that we always live with that joy that comes from being a child of God. So often we live with a kind of fear or a kind of dread or a kind of emptiness. Maybe because some of the things we want in our life haven't come to pass. But if we really pay attention to the Spirit within us and spend time with God and listen to God and let God's love pour into us, that can lift us up out of whatever doldrums, whatever depression we find ourselves in. Believing that God is love and that we are children of God should make us feel so wonderful. I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad if you don't feel wonderful. I don't always feel wonderful. But my prayer is for all of us that we will listen to those words that says that we are children of God. That God knows us by name. God is calling each of us, tenderly calling as that anthem the choir just sang. God is tenderly calling us to come home to where we belong, which is in the family of God knowing that we are God's children. Outside of these walls, out beyond these doors, in every direction, there are people, and maybe even people inside this room, who question whether they really are God's children. If God really is love, if God really loves me, or you, or them. Sometimes I know it feels like the blessings all seem to fall on the people around us, but we're still hurting. We're still longing. But I just want you to leave here today knowing that those blessings may appear to be only be falling on those around us, but they are falling on each of us. If we open our eyes and open our hearts and allow the spirit that lives within us to speak to us, to love us, to transform us, then we can be who God created us to be. And if we already believe that without a shadow of a doubt, I hope that those of us who do will go out of these walls and find some people who don't believe that and let them know just that God loves them and God welcomes them and God claims them as children too. Amen.